Hi everyone. For this video I am taking the idea of the previous video a little bit further. I really enjoyed showing you the carving around the top of the glass or on a small area on the top of the glass and so I decided to do one a little bit more advanced and a little bit more adventurous and I sat there thinking I want to go all around the whole rim and but the main feature at the front and I am picturing many different things I mean so many subjects it's endless but I actually said to my hubby what do you think of when I uh, suggest something coming down from the top of a glass and um, the first thing he said was a sloth Okay, we don't get them in this country, but they're really cute. They're lovely and furry, and uh, oh well, they just—they look adorable. I've never seen one in real life, but I thought, yeah. And straight away, I pictured the sloth coming down from the top of the glass, so it's hanging, um, and with. Uh, branches and leaves going around the rest of the glass because he's in like a jungle <laughs> so yeah I think it will work so guess what I've done I have sketched I have chosen um, a glass from the same sort of family as the previous glass and the reason I've chosen it is because it is a size that is for some reason not very popular and I've had them for a long time they're beautiful crystal they they're heavy they've got that lovely thick rim and they're just lovely to carve as you saw with the previous video the quality is is amazing and so because I don't tend to sell them as drinking glasses I don't know whether they are port or whatever but uh, nobody drinks this much anymore <laughs> I don't think they do shots or they do you know obviously the, the bigger wine glasses so but I thought if I turn it into an ornament then it's probably uh, more sellable something that's going to be more popular as as an ornament um, especially with the carving around the rim nobody's going to be able to drink of out of it of course and uh, well <laughs> Once again, I think we shall have fun and I, I, can, I can visualize it and that's always a good thing. The fact that I have scribbled it on, always a good thing, but it's always subject to change. You never know. Perhaps this time we'll stick to my drawing. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but enjoy and um, perhaps you'd like to try and do one of these yourself at some point. Righty ho! Okay, let's get on with it. So first of all, we'll start with my favorite little burr, the White Arkansas. And of course, simply going over all my basic outlines, just so that we get an idea of where everything is. And then of course, we can take away the white background. I never stick exactly to the lines as you know and sometimes I add bits and pieces here and there and sometimes I ignore parts of my drawing but it, it, it just serves as um, a guideline. I use the white Arkansas dry as you know reason being um, I find it will wear out too fast otherwise but there, there are times where you prefer to use it wet Thank you. 
I've kept this little image of um, the sloth a little bit large in the front because the his back uh, matches the shape of the bottom of the glass and the fact that it's sort of wrapping around it you know underneath the glass a little bit doesn't really matter uh, it's just um, quite sympathetic with the shape of the glass when you are engraving tree branches always make sure that the end of the branch um, or even the middle of the branch is not thicker than where the branch starts that's quite important and if you do happen to thicken it by mistake go back and make the beginning of it thicker still as usual I have sped up the video ever so slightly I think this one's at 120% So that's the outline completed and now my uh, L20 with a diamond all the way down. As I say, if you haven't got one of these and would like one, then drop me a line. Um, the alternative, of course, is a rat's tail. And you will see just now that I will change to a rat's tail so that you can see that it can do this job pretty well. So lots of water and without pressing too hard, just a gentle carving motion, sort of sawing motion. And due to the fact this is, of course, beautiful, soft crystal, it is much easier. And it's just um, carving it away like, like butter, really. Try not to uh, start too close to the um, image that you are engraving, just in case you go a little too far. Uh, obviously, in this case, it's quite easy to adjust if I if I need to adjust. But uh, once you have removed the glass, of course, that is it. <laughs> There's no going back. So if you are a little bit nervous, start in the middle and then slightly work back towards the area that you've got to um, carve out. Well, work back towards the leaf or whatever it is you're, you're carving out. Be careful if you do have a little piece building up because it will pop off at some stage. So but as long as you're wearing all your gear, um, nothing's going to nothing's going to hurt you. When I say gear, of course, in case you didn't know, that's that's your mask and your glasses magnifier. I have been asked in the past, oh, here's the rat's tail. Very old, worn out rat's tail, by the way, so you don't have to have a new one. I've been asked in the past what, um, here's a comparison, what uh, glass dust has done to my hands. And quite frankly, I don't know. I don't think it's done anything. And as you can see, I do have to deal with a lot of glass dust every day. And uh, 38 years down the line, quite frankly, um, I, I don't think it does you any harm at all, to be honest. As you can see, the old rat's tail is doing a perfectly good job. Sorry about my head getting in the way. 
And of course, if you use the rat's tail a lot, I mean, obviously this one, as I say, it's an old one. I have have ground down the top several times to get down to fresh diamond. But because I've never used it in this action, with you know, with this action in this way, the diamonds all the way down the edge are really quite fresh. They haven't been used before. So it's cutting into the glass very easily. Of course, with something like this, you can carve it out. And then if you want to use a sm small diamond burr uh, to uh, smooth up the edges, um, you can certainly do that. You can use whatever you like, really. So here I'm pointing out uh, an area. In fact, there are a, a couple of areas where I wanted to extend the branch, make it thicker. Uh, I, I just think it, it just needed that. Um, so I'm just adding an extra little line with the waxy white pencil. And you'll see that all it is is, is a thicker branch going along as opposed to going straight up out of the glass. That bit of action there, I would be better off using um, a, a ball diamond or something like that. I was just lazy. <laughs> I had the rat's tail in my hand, so I used it there. But um, much later on, of course, uh, we can um, play around with the top, making sure that our edges are as we would like them. Of course, I have got in front of me a reference image, um, and I think this is really important. As you know, I do use photographs all the time. If I am engraving an animal, there's no ways I'm going to try and dream it up. I, I can visualize it. I think anyone can visualize something, but <laughs> it's producing that picture um, onto the glass is something else, and so I have to make sure that I have got something in front of me that I can literally copy um, or in fact trace and get everything in the right place and go from there. Just, you know, the proportions, the eyes in the right place, the nose in the right place, that sort of thing. And uh, But if only I could draw exactly what I have in my mind. I'm, there are many, many people out there who, who can literally do that. A little youngster, um, I remember this quote of a, a youngster saying something along the lines of um, uh, he likes to close his eyes and think and then he likes to draw his think. Right, I have got quite a large diamond burr. And I am very roughly, uh, when I say roughly, it's of no particular pattern. It's just back and forth and lumpy and, and slightly ridgy. And I'm just creating bark. And it's fantasy bark. You can make whatever bark you want. If there's a particular kind of tree you want to use or a particular kind of tree that the sloth, sloths, sloths, <laughs> I don't know slots uh, live in. Um, you can tell I don't know them. And, uh, you know, you can make the bark look more authentic, but I like to just make it lumpy and bumpy and um, we'll pick that up with uh, rubbers and that later. Of course, near the rim, as the previous glass, there's no ways am I going deep because we are near the rim of the glass. And so all I am doing is ensuring that the very edges are just uh, roughed up so that they are white at this moment. And then just as you come down a little bit, you can go a little bit deeper, creating little ridges. But for the absolute top, I am barely touching the surface.
Let's say this glass is relatively thick. Probably not the best glass to drink out of. I like to drink out of a fine wine glass, but uh, I don't like to engrave on a fine <laughs> glass. <laughs> of course, for engraving purposes, this is a much nicer uh, option. So if you are going to uh, try and engrave or carve around the rim, go for a thicker glass. Whether it's crystal or not, it really does need to be thick. I love the fact that you can just see the beginnings of his eyes peeping at you while <laughs> oh, they're peeping at me while I'm busy uh, engraving his tree for him or her. I've got my speed up to 50,000 RPM for this. This tool is utterly beautiful. Honestly, I don't even know that it's spinning. Sometimes I've had to check first because I, I can't hear it. I can't feel it. It's just incredible. Later on, we can add uh, much smaller branches, twigs, smaller leaves, you know, that sort of thing we leave right to the end um, and fill in the spaces sympathetically. becomes increasingly more difficult to uh, clean. <laughs> you can't just run the towel around the edge as normal because of course it's all rough and ready. Right, there's basically uh, how it's looking. I've got with me a green stone now and I am creating the effects of the leaves in our usual fashion. Working lightly at the top. Having said that, the leaves are thin. They're not big, hefty, chunky, plasticine leaves. So that's why I'm using this and I'm not pressing that hard. But we are creating uh, two sides to the leaf and on each side there is the suggestion of the grow the vein type effect going in the right direction almost feathery if you like now I have very quickly added uh, some little uh, kind of folded over leaves which we don't often do and so I thought I'd do a throw in a quick couple of folded over leaves they will look better once they're completely engraved and shaded <laughs> sort of an S shape and then two other side bits I like using this green stone because it's not as white as a diamond and it's not as dull as the white Arkansas and you can shade it so easily, you can brighten it so easily. It's a real mid-tone. 
And of course, the leaves are generally dark. Um, so it works well for me. Right, so now we're ready to tackle our little sloth. I almost want to give him a name, except I don't know if it's him or her. <laughs> Silly me. Now, I bet you're all looking at it face and uh, thinking, well, those eyes, nose and mouth, they look pretty negative. What are you talking about, Liz? And of course, they look negative at the moment, but by the time I've added the diamond around it, you will see they will be much darker and they will end up being pretty clear. So they are the darkest areas. I've used the white Arkansas for them so that they are very easily polished and that works just so easy to, to mark out the dark areas of a face like that using the white Arkansas. So to start off, it looks negative, but then it will be positive. We will make it positive. So I am making sure that I'm roughing in some uh, hairy areas um, of the sloth. Uh, I've just added a couple of little lines at the top for its fingers, but I think there's probably only, I think there's only two anyway, so we will sort that out later. At the moment, <laughs> it's got... He or she's got several, but uh, yeah, very, very roughly, I'm going to map him. Basically, it's kind of, um, it's putting in the direction of the hairs, and it's like pre preparing the canvas, and um, also in the lightest areas. I mean, obviously, so they're all not going to be this light but it's a start it's it's the beginnings of the lighter areas now you can already see that the facial features 
are becoming darker. We've got a long way to go still. I chose to work dry. Uh, two reasons. Um, this diamond is really, really a strong new one. And uh, this is very soft crystal. Uh, so it cuts incredibly easily. And also, I think I was just actually quite lazy. <laughs> I didn't feel like getting the water going. And uh, of course, you can see what's going on quite easily. I can see what's going on easily as well. And uh, yeah, normally, normally I would be using water. As you know, there are many engravers out there who never, ever use water. There's no hard and fast rule. Of course, this is producing an awful lot of dust. And as you can see, the dust is going straight up and straight back to my extractor. Preparing the canvas is really important. It just gives your your background some movement. He has very interesting hair directions. I know I have done one before. I definitely have engraved one before. I must look up that picture. can't make it out because it's a little bit tricky the bottom arm is sort of going along the bottom of its body there and he's just hanging on by the three limbs that branch that um, bottom branch wasn't in my original sketch and I just added him in because his leg wasn't attached to anything. There you go. I hope you enjoyed part one of our little sloth hanging from the top of the glass. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.